Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today let's complete the square. This is a topic that drives you students wild, but hopefully after this little lesson you'll find that it's not as difficult as you may have thought. Let's, let's start with observing this perfect square here, x plus 3 squared. Let's expand and get x squared plus 6x plus 9. If you don't see that immediately, you should stop the video and rewrite x plus 3 squared as x plus 3 times x plus 3 utilize the distributive property and you'll soon find that this does indeed equal x squared plus 6x plus 9. Let's rewrite the 9 as 3 squared and look at it in this form. So here we have the sum of x and 3 squared equals x squared plus 6x plus 3 squared. What we want to take note of here is the coefficient of x. This is, this is the big guy when it comes to completing the square is this coefficient. If we look, we have these two terms here on different sides of the equation, uh, threes. How do they relate to six? What's the relationship between six and three? Or what is a relationship between six and three? Surely you would say that uh, three is half of six. So we could rewrite these as x plus six over two squared equals x squared plus six x plus uh, six over two squared. Okay? We will find that this is always the relationship when dealing with perfect squares. Let's look at another one. Here's x plus 8 squared. We expand to get x squared plus 16, x plus 64. Rewriting 64 is 8 squared. Let's look at it here. Again, so we have our coefficient of x is 16. And let's highlight the 8's here. So uh, what's the relationship between 16 and 8? Sure enough, 8 is half of 16. So we, we're always having this relationship popping up in perfect squares where we're, we need half of the coefficient of x. So how is this useful? Let's look at an example. Here is something that is not a perfect square. It's x squared plus 4x. And for whatever reason, uh, we want to make it a perfect square. Uh, so how do we make it a perfect square? We take half of the coefficient of x square it and then add it on to the end and that is it and thus by adding this term this is called completing the square that's the whole thing about completing the square is you add half of the coefficient of x and you square it and thus you have the perfect square x plus 2 squared in this case so you say what if we have uh, subtraction in the original statement where before we had I believe it was x plus 3 squared now we have x minus 10 squared so this is a perfect square let's let's look at it and we'll find that we have similar things happening or about the exact same thing so look at the coefficient of x is 20 uh, or you could say negative 20 but let's just stick with 20 for now and we have these 10's and uh, lo and behold how does 10 relate to 20 uh, surely 10 is half of 20 or 20 divided by 2. So we still see the same thing happening even when we have the minus sign there in the beginning. The only difference is is the minus signs do indeed pop up here highlighted in red. So let's look at a simple example. Here we have x squared minus 12x. This is not a perfect square. We want to make it a perfect square thus completing the square. So what is half of the coefficient of x? It's 12 over 2. So we take 12 over 2 squared and add it on the end, to the end. And we, th thus, then we have a perfect square. We have x minus 6 squared. So now you're thinking, well, what if we don't have something that 2 divides into? Well, <laughs> same deal, just as easy. So here we have x squared minus 13x. This is not a perfect square. I need to make it a perfect square. Again, by making it a perfect square, we call this process completing the square. So what do I do? I look at the coefficient of x. It's 13. I take half of it, square it, and add it to the end, giving me the perfect square, x minus 13 halves squared. OK, so Let's look at an example here. We have this equation x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 0. And let's solve for x. 
first thing I want to do is get the x squared plus 4x by itself. By adding 5 to both sides. And so now I have a situation where I have the x squared plus 4x on one side by itself. And if we look here at the coefficient of x squared, we noticed that before in our, in our previous example, to, to make a perfect square over here, we have to add half of that coefficient to both sides, or half of that coefficient and square it. So we get x squared plus 4x plus half of that coefficient, 4 over 2 squared equals 5. And remember the golden rule of mathematics. Anything we do to one side of an equation, we have to do it to the other. So we added 4 half squared on this side, and so now we must add 4 half squared on that side. Okay. And so now we have const we've purposely constructed a perfect square on the left-hand side of the equation. We have x plus 4 half squared, and 4 halves is 2, so 4 half squared equals 5 plus 4 halves is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So let's simplify this down to x plus 2 squared equals 9. And now we can take the square root of both sides and get x plus 2 equals plus or minus 3. And that leaves us with x, oops, x equals 3 minus 2, or x equals negative 3 minus 2. So we get x equals 1, or x equals a negative 5. So my solution set is 1, negative 5. Okay, now for U111 guys on the final exam, you will be given a problem similar to this where you have to take this circle here and put it in standard form. And what it involves is completing the square twice. So let's look at it. We have here in red, we need to complete the square on that piece. And let's make this one green. We need to complete the square on the y's. So let's get to it. So x squared plus 4x and to make a perfect square we need to add half of half of 4 which is 4 halves squared okay now plus y squared minus 8y and to complete the square there we need to add half 8 over 2 squared and equals 64 now again, the golden rule of mathematics is if we do something to one side of an equation, we have to do it to the other. So we have to add the 4 halves squared. And let me just simplify that. The 4 halves is 2. 2 squared is 4. And plus 8 halves is 4. So we need 16. Okay? And so now we get the equation that the in red here this piece boils down to x plus 2 squared plus uh, in green I can rewrite this piece as y minus 4 squared uh, this equals the sum over there is what is that uh, 10, 84. Okay, and in standard form, we want to write our radius, um, have our radius squared. So to, to put it in standard form, we have x plus 2 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals square root of 84 squared. So here's our circle, and it has a center located at what is that a negative 2 uh, down up 4 and we have a radius is square root of 84